do want to talk to you about your your journey and how you've kind of gone through it all. I think it's kind of fascinating. Uh, one, obviously, mm. you you go to a lot of yoga retreats. Um, I, I actually don't go to tons, but okay. I I do go when I do go. I uh, I have gone as far as Thailand. Mm-hmm. So that was that was one of my journeys. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. Has it helped you in a way? I think. I feel like uh, when people ask me about this journey thing uh, that, you know, we're all on, for me, it's kind of been in blips and blops. It kind of comes and it goes. And I think with 2020 happening and the major disconnect and all the craziness that happened, I've never wanted to connect more. So I'd say 2020 is the year that it it's kind of been more prevalent than any other year. You know, um, what did you learn in 2020? From all of the, as much as it's been crazy, what have you kind of learned? Oh my God, so many lessons. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I think I think we had touched on the topic. The, the The major divide within people made me realize this kind of, um, I'd been a little naive in how I had viewed people that I, I liked to believe, I, I would love to believe that we we're all the same, but I don't know that we all are. <laughs> no. And from that, you know, it doesn't have to be a negative for me, like the positive that comes from realizing we're not all alike is that like the importance of finding your people, like the importance of finding the people that, um, that have your back, the people that, you know, support you, that you support back, um, and people that are kind of like-minded. So it's the little things and it's even the people that just check up on you and see, are you okay? Absolutely. Um, from something as basic as a text, but, you know, obviously, more importantly, a phone call, um, a plan to do something and also like talking real talk. Um, you and I touched on this the other day. I realized in 2020 how much like, and I'm guilty of this as well, uh, how much I have been sitting back, kind of like putting on a facade for the world. Right. For years, what, right? What like was the facade? Like, what were you putting as um, for your own um, self? Yeah. Well, just like that you don't want to burden people with your problems or your deep thoughts or any of that. So you just put on this facade, like everything's good and, and you keep everything good on your social networking. Everything's happy. And, you know, when you're, when you're out socializing, same thing. Everything's kind of surface level. And that's good and all to have that kind of fun side. I'm not saying that should ever be gone, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Do you think we came into this mentality where we're just like the, I don't care what people think mentality. Cause a lot of the times, especially before the pandemic, you know, most times we were just like, what will people think? And it's obviously in our own heads, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's generally always in our own heads. (laughs) (laughs) Those conversations about, Oh my God, what if they think of me this way? always happen or if i say something like this what are they gonna think yeah Yeah, i mean i again going back to 2020 because so many things came to the surface and one thing i realize i do is i dive into rabbit holes i dive into them a lot and especially when i have time on my hands i'm very guilty of diving into these rabbit holes of like um what ifs or you know um kind of negative ways of thinking and yeah, it does kind of you hit a point where you're just like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't care how much about what all these other people are thinking or these past scenarios or, you know, whatever the case may be. In these rabbit holes, are you finding old memories creep up on you? And I know we yes, based on it's this. exactly what it is. Exactly. It, it can it can be something as far back as your childhood suddenly is um, popping up. And, and you're replaying it and you're sort of like, um, well, a lot of people would refer to, you know, things like that as trauma. So like traumatic events and traumatic events don't always have to be like, you know, horrific. They could just be something that are painful, right? Or something that, that holds a bit of like pain or shame or something to that effect. And I found that's what was coming out of the woodwork is all these like old events that I hadn't really ever dealt with. I just kind of, you know, because I think we're trained to just be busy and we were busy up until the pandemic. You know? <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and and as, as soon as those feelings creep up on us, we're like, oh, my God, I got to go do something. I got to let's grab a drink or let's go do this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> let's or, you know, let's there's so many different ways you can ignore trauma. 
I'm just going to say that word, even though, again, it doesn't always have to be horrific events, meaning trauma. Well, there's all forms of trauma. Exactly. So it's very easy to like keep busy just by watching Netflix. I mean, that's an easy way to ignore um, what's going on un under the surface. Or, you know, in old times, you would go out and socialize or drink or whatever. There's so many ways to ignore stuff that's trying to like present itself to you. Have you found with facing these traumas, it's you're just trying to find forgiveness within yourself or within the other individuals, or are you just kind of just holding it in? It's, it's yeah. eating you more alive looking at this trauma. Uh, I think at first it was because I really was like, what the hell's going on, mm -hmm. right? When it was all kind of surfacing daily, like every single day it was a new one surfacing. And so at first I was quite freaked out by it. I didn't know what to do with it. And I think as time's gone on and I started like, kind of allowing it to happen and allowing it to play out and then trying to find ways to put a lid on it, you know, like almost like forgive it and put a lid on it. Cause who uh, wants to face that stuff? <laughs> it's well, it's facing, I think it's facing it. You are always facing it. So, I mean, I, I'm not trying to run away from it anymore. I'm, I am kind of like, all right, let's play it out. Let's do the trauma thing. But at the end of the day, I can't take it with me any longer. So when I say put a lid on it, it's done. Yeah. It's hard to bear, but have, when you put the lid on it, have you found healing in it in certain areas? Not all the scenarios will always be healed. No. Is there some, yeah. You know? I, have I, yeah, I've definitely found some peace uh, along the way and outlets to deal with it. And then of course, you know, like not everything's like you said, healable or not everything is like going to happen overnight. So, you know, some things are a little deeper. So <laughs> you may try to put that lid on, it's still going to pop open. Um, but I, I don't know, I think, I think no bad can come from actually having uh, to look at your life and and look at who you've been and also look at the people that maybe were not great to you like there. You can't just bury that stuff forever. You do have to let it um, let it go, let it out. Right. And what are some ways you let it out? Like, how are there's, you know, there's work through workout or fitness. I know you're big on that. What else is there? Can you do to like release that pain or just that energy that's in you? Cause that's not good energy to keep in. And no, obviously. I mean, and I, this is where, you know, practices like meditation stuff um, are great for everybody. Like in, our, in terms of being able to kind of like find a peaceful place within yourself to go to. So uh, obviously meditation is great. Writing has always been great. I don't know why I stopped writing um, as an adult. Like, cause I started writing when I was a kid, like keeping journals. And it was like a real outlet for, for any, you know, good and bad that was happening in my life. And then as an adult, you kind of, I, I don't know, I sort of didn't like what I was writing. I found it very repetitive. Hmm. Um, so but maybe it's because I wasn't tuning in enough to be able to write anything of substance. And now I'm kind of like trying to write again and trying to like write differently, um, write more, you know, less surface. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I started journaling maybe uh, about, let's say a month ago. Yep. And, uh, I found peace in it, but I stopped for about a week and I started last night again and I yeah. found peace again. I found contentment because i can every evening just get your feelings out but you what i've realized in journaling is you can't bullshit yourself no you really well, I, have I to be so true with yourself and say this is how i'm feeling absolutely yeah my, my biggest fear was this if someone finds my journal and it's like whoa what is this guy talking about I, I, yeah i can relate to that and at certain times in my life for sure but i don't know like you said there there has to come a point where the the constant worry of what others think um either has to be cut in half or if you know if it's possible you gotta let it go completely um but this i find for myself i've spent an entire lifetime caring about perception <laughs> and perception from others but not an i didn't care about myself i just cared about how others viewed me and like that's the biggest waste of time and because you're never going to please everyone everybody you could be the nicest human in the entire world you can have like um everything going for you and somebody can hate you sadly i don't know how this is possible but it seems to be the case somebody can hate you just by looking at you yep. 
that's how easily, unfortunately, hate can be distributed. And so, like, I, for me, I'm realizing the amount of time I had truly have wasted trying to get people that didn't really um, fit my kind of groove, uh, trying to get those people's um, accolades is like, why? <laughs> What a complete and utter waste of time. And you know, it's and... funny when we start looking at all these other people, we're like, oh, we just want their affection or love or their attention or just the pat on the back from them. Yet, yeah, there's all these other people on the sidelines that are just there for us that we just ignore. Well, and that's, isn't that a sad thing? It and is. like, I think a lot of people that, that thrive on perfectionism actually are guilty of this, where you can walk into a room and you could have nine people there that are so beyond happy to see you and support you in every way and you tend to focus on that one person that's in the corner sort of giving you the stink eye <laughs> yeah. yeah and i mean that's insane you have nine people in a room full of 10 that'll love you and you're focusing on the one that doesn't and you're still trying to make them love you <laughs> like it's yeah, it's amazing. yeah which actually pushes them even further away so <laughs> it's it, it's a it's a completely wasteful um attempt really <laughs> what have you found though like when these like the number 10 that doesn't really care or, or maybe they do, but they just don't know. How do you find a way to let go of that? Cause oftentimes we also think, Oh, they don't like us or they're giving us that dirty look as an analogy, mm -hmm. but it's actually, maybe they're not happy within themselves. Well, I think that's a hundred percent. What it is, 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 uh, is they're not happy within themselves or your energy is just, you know, not aligned with theirs, but, I don't know that it ever gets, I, I don't, I don't know that I'll ever reach that place where you're kind of like, I'm cool with the fact that we like, that you don't like me for some reason or that we don't fit, but I have, I have lessened it somehow through kind of, I don't know, again, journaling, really kind of getting in tune with things again, where I'm like, oh my God, I can't lose like sleep over this stuff. Yeah. Like any longer. I mean, my God, you know, you have one, one short life to live and, and you know, we should be celebrating all the good people. Yeah. Is there, is there kind of like things that you do now that just makes you feel happy? Cause I mean, anxiety is one thing that just can be a mother, oh, you know, what it I mean? is a killer. And I wish, I love that it's talked about more nowadays. I love that it is because 20 years ago when I was first going through anxiety as a young, like 20 year old, I, um, it, it, I, I'd never even heard of the word anxiety. So that's how little it was talked about. Depression was sort of kind of starting to get out there, but it, it, again, it was kind of one of those taboo subjects, which now it's getting more and more discussed. Um, anyways, sorry. What was the original question to that? There was a point. That was oh no. How like anxiety, like how have you been able to deal with anxiety? And I mean, it's such a real thing. And I think 2020, a lot of people got anxious for, for a lot of things. I mean, obviously mental health has been finally here at the forefront. I, I, I don't want to lie and say, Oh, I figured it all out. Cause that would be a lie. It, to me, it's like anxiety is something that you have to manage. So like, are you, you know, I think every day you just got to give yourself pats on the back for anything you're doing to manage it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it goes away. So it's like, it's um, once you kind of have it, Sometimes you can almost celebrate it and, 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 and be in a good place with it. But I don't know that you can ever just be like, yeah, it's gone. I don't think that ever happens. Yeah. I think it's learning, learning tools to manage it or to like, like, for instance, I enjoy getting like out to the mountains now. That's my new thing in this most recent shutdown is just getting out there and being away from all, all of this. Are you going on a hike? Are you on a drive or driving, yeah. hiking, all the whole kind of, thing just being away from it finding places to be that are away from all the kind of hustle and bustle of just daily life in general can i tell you something if you know like with 2020 the hustle and bustle kind of stopped what made you now realize i, I need to still leave even though there's this quiet or a different hustle and bustle now um well it's a different you're right different hustle and bustle now it's like the hustle and bustle of the human condition and realizing like, you know, there's all this uh, crazy energy out there. Some of it obviously could be positive depending on who you're talking to, but there's a lot of negative energy flowing around right now for all of different things, whether it be 
political or pandemic or uh, financial, any of that. Fi- financial, it's crazy what's going on out there. So it doesn't just have to be the hustle and bustle of a city. It's the hustle and bustle of the human mind, like, you know, and, I, and I love how you touched on this. You know, everyone wants to be like, oh, it's kumbaya and we're all good. Everyone's good. Yeah. We're all in this together and everyone's happy. Yes. But there's that darker emotion here that and it's underlined and some people are showing in a very aggressive manner and it's pretty scary out there right now well you nailed it right there i mean this is where i really noticed this year the amount of conversations i had where it started off with yeah i'm doing really good it's like and i said this on a podcast last week i said there is no way (laughs) that that you can possibly say yeah things are awesome like maybe the odd person but that can't be a general statement things aren't awesome i mean life has changed dramatically for a lot of people so like why aren't people talking and sitting there having you know discussions even i'm 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 just as much to blame where times i'm like yeah i'm doing good and it's like i wasn't doing good at all you know um and why aren't people talking about it more openly and and i think now's a good time to tap into that and have those open discussions with whether they be your friends or new people or um through a podcast however it needs to happen you know do you feel a lot of uh, the conversations right now with just friends or people in general are just very surface, like, oh, how's it going? Oh, you know, business is tough and oh, it's a struggle, but we're, we're making through. And then it's like the yeah. end of the conversation. It, it yeah, they're, I mean, I, I don't want to like label anybody that like, oh, they're just surface. Because again, I've been guilty of that this year myself. But like, um, I do notice that people don't want to talk about it. They're shying away. The conversations get cut off sooner than they should when we should probably be diving into hey you're having a really crappy week why don't you talk about that or you know your kids are driving you insane and instead of saying they're doing fantastic in school why don't you tell me about you know you're having a challenging time and 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 the same goes for me you know like uh, this whole putting on a show is getting really exhausting especially in a time where you know we could do that prior to the pandemic we could all put on a show done some reflecting and i say of course i do a lot of social media stuff and i'm like oh this is exhausting it's it's like somebody's photo or put an emoji of a fire or a heart and and i don't know it's it's getting old it's it's we're just keep going on the rat race of life and we're not learning anything depth Mm -hmm. instead of width is what i i think i'm evolving towards now or striving towards let's say yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had some fun with social media, I found it very interesting, like, especially I, I enjoy Instagram um, more than anything else. I don't like a lot of other platforms now. But Instagram, I've always liked I thought, you know, it's a, it's a fun way just to connect with people. And I did take it lightly. But then, and then I, maybe I did, I don't know how to explain it. Suddenly, I just hit a point where I'm like, maybe I'm relying on it too much for some sort of happiness, right? Especially in times where you were sad or have going through struggle, let's say in 2020, you rely on that as you're sort of like reaching out to people. And it's like, that's not reaching out. Like, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) getting likes and hits is, is a temporary, very temporary uh, fix. Uh, And it's, it's definitely not going to get you any growth. You know, that, that gratification, no, (laughs) it's not. So yeah, I've definitely started kind of shying away from even that. I have from 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 my main page on Instagram just for for now, right? Like mm-hmm. until I'm kind of in a place where I feel things are looking a little bit better for everybody. I, I just I want to connect differently. Absolutely, and I think uh, a lot of the energy on social media has changed. And again, it depends on who you're following, who you're not following. But you know, people that I knew that were so positive before the pandemic have really become sour and oh yeah <laughs> like it's, or, and it's suddenly, evidently clear yeah yeah or suddenly a page that was like about food has now become about like american politics and like <laughs> you know or like um or opinions on conspiracy theories and i mean that sort of stuff i really think has done negative things to you know, the human condition is, is being fed daily information that's either false or it's beyond negative. Mm-hmm. 
and to I just don't think the human brain is meant to cope with that amount of information, especially it being that negative and that crazy. All right, I'm with you on that. Uh-huh. You know, I'm I was thinking about the Canadian Mental Health Association recently, and it always fascinates me in a weird way that what's happening there is no one's actually calling those lines because if you you're feeling anxious and you're feeling all these things the last thing people do is actually reach out to those 1-800 numbers and and we start caving in within ourselves and i think that's where people break down oh oh for sure and i mean i can't even imagine what people are doing this year without outlets of some nature so i mean that that in itself has led me to sort of look at different avenues to create places that people can like talk (laughs) and or even places that i've gone to like listen so like um you know listen to something that they can relate to which right now i don't know is talking more and more about the pandemic as much as it is about talking about you know how are you feeling what is going on in in your life, et cetera, et cetera, you know, uh, there needs Matt, do you feel like we're all in this together? I, I, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> you know, tough, the word we always hear, right? Answer. I'd like to think so. I think in my heart of hearts, I would love to believe we're all in it together, but I'm seeing that in many cases or some cases is the better word. Uh, no, I don't know that we are, but if we're seeing that, if we're seeing that, you know, there's this divide and this disconnect, then it's important to really hone into your, to your, um, to people like yourself versus like, you know, I don't want information anymore thrown at me about the people that are being awful and, and rebellious and crazy with their theories. I don't want that information. I want people that are like-minded that are looking for deeper meaning, deeper connection. So no, I don't know how to fully answer that question. No, no, no. You're right on that. You nailed it. And the other thing is this is I don't I I thought I was going to miss everything. I thought I was going to miss the humdrum of life, but I don't. Mm. I really don't. The rat race, like if you pause and see what we were doing. Okay, go go to a client, go to work and go meet your friends, go for a drink. Let's redo it again. Like where were we going? Nowhere. There was no substance to anything. I think it depends on why you like if I always look back at when I was like younger so where I could maybe I had more energy I don't know but I would do all those things because I did enjoy connecting so I would work and then I would go out and I'd connect and then I'd go out and meet some more people and connect but then um, perhaps something changed perhaps my energy you know as an adult or just I was running on empty I'm not really sure I, I found like I was forcing myself to connect with people which draws back to what we've even been talking about today. Maybe I wasn't having real conversations, which was what was draining. Did you have a breaking point in 2020? Oh my God, a few. Yeah. <laughs> I had a few. Yeah. I think I think by about, I think it's the whole year it was crazy, but by about like November, I, I suddenly had the answer as to what was missing. So prior to that, I just had all this other stuff coming to the surface and I didn't have an answer. Yeah, so I'd say the breakthrough uh, came for me in about November time. Do, do you feel like now that people's true colors have come out, is there ways that you know some friendships have been further pushed back in your life, or have they come closer together to you? I think that, well, I mean, I think that's a natural progression of things anyways as you get older. I mean, I remember my parents always saying to me, if you're like, whatever, I think they used 50, or something they'd say if you have like five good friends like amazing friends consider yourself lucky and i remember thinking well that's nuts can who would have who would only have five friends you know? <laughs> yes. but, it's so true but what i realize now what they were trying to say is five true like true good friends that you know you can have complete open dialogue and complete openness with and trust mm-hmm. and trust is a big one too and genuinely care about how you're feeling. Absolutely. And would like hop on a plane if things were not well versus be like, well, you take care. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you're like, you're going to get better. Just stay strong. Yeah. And there, I think 
as an adult, obviously you meet so many people, you're going to end up having an immense amount of surface friendships. And I don't know, I find that exhausting now. I used to find it a lot of fun in my thirties, like I'm 43 now, but in my thirties or twenties, I was out all the time. And, and I think at, over time, I noticed that the connections weren't, they didn't have that. They didn't seem genuine. Cause you're not from Calgary originally. Calgary. No, I am. I mean, oh, you are. I grew up in Calgary most of my life, and then I moved to Vancouver, and then I moved back almost five years ago. So you were born in South Africa. I was born in South Africa. Yeah, Yeah. that's so cool. (laughs) That's such a like, wow, that's a journey in life. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough to have gone back there twice in the last five years, and man, it's an amazing place. Have you found travel? to be one of the most stress relieving things for yourself. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I think like a lot of people, I was traveling for the sake of, um, getting away from the rat race, number one, but number two, like from, um, needing, just needing to disconnect. I wasn't traveling for the right reasons. And now in the con, like in 2020 with everything that's gone on and obviously I'll appreciate travel on a whole different level. Uh, when we're doing it more regularly, it's like, man, I never want to waste a minute traveling again. Like, I don't want to have, you know, days of Netflix and chill because I just did that all of 2020. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, no, I don't think I, I think a lot of people travel to just go and party and, you know, like definitely escape reality. And I don't know. I, I think I can appreciate it on a totally different level now. One thing I admire that you did is, oh, I think it was, what is it, a couple years ago, the shark, yes, the cage. That was oh. living. Good being Lord. How it, did you being do in that? a uh, cage with great white sharks, you, you, if you don't realize how alive you are at that minute, then nothing's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you got to walk me through this. So what made you just say, let's do this? Well, I'm sort of a thrill seeker anyways. Like I'm always like, I mean, we jumped out of a plane in the same trip, right? But I think getting, I'm getting a bit more like, interested in thrill seeking as I get older because life, is, life short. is short. And I also like, you know, when I was younger and I go away to Mexico with my friends or the here or there, it was different types of holidays. Like, again, it was to party and like, who's the most tanned? Um <laughs> Like, you know, what outfit are you wearing out tonight to the bar? And that's obviously just not what I'm interested in now. And yeah, I want to do things that like really like uplift your spirit or my spirit, I should say, in future travels and and go to places that are a little less, you know, about sitting on a beach and burning your skin (laughs) and more about a bit of culture, right? So walk me through this. You, you decide to go through the shark mm. adventure, this cage diving. Did they tell you that? I mean, there's always a risk. Holy. Well, I mean, it's pretty safe at the end of the day. Like, this isn't like Jaws where it's like trying to eat the cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but at that minute when that thing is like right in front of you and it does look kind of like Jaws. Yeah. Like I say, you're very aware of uh, how alive you are just like when we were, we also went on safari as well and seeing you know animals not behind the cage but literally running around like we were we were the people in the zoo and because you, you're in the little uh whatever um uh, safari vehicles because <laughs> they're looking at you like what are you doing in my land and i don't know it's like mm-hmm. it's a different feeling than than seeing it through you know it's a different lens when you looked at the shark in its eyes or its teeth, how what was the magnitude of the power and strength of those creatures? That's uh, everyone asked me a similar question to that, and my answer was like, I actually was amazed at how peaceful they are and how at peace I felt around them, because they don't look mean when they're just swimming by. It's when you see them open their mouth <laughs> and you see the teeth, that's when suddenly you're like put back to the movie Jaws, but. Prior to that, they're quite majestic looking and the, you don't feel that aggression. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it was a wonderful experience and kind of changed forever how I view sharks. Of course. Did you get more of an adrenaline 
jumping off a plane or the or plane I, the I think was like oh my, yeah I almost had a heart attack <laughs> that was scary thinking about it gives me a heart it was attack. scary like I think going up I was like ah, it's all good and then like sitting on the edge before you jump you're like what the hell am I I, I shouldn't be on here like take me back I don't want to do this but I'm glad I did it at the end of the day I don't know that I'd do it again but <laughs> <laughs> I go in a shark. T- I go in the uh, with the great whites anytime over jumping out of a plane. I went parasailing one time in Mexico, and I was like, "Okay, this is enough. Take it, bring me down." <laughs> yeah, parasailing seems. I've done that, and that was actually perfectly fine compared to the jumping out of a plane. That was too much for me. There's moments up there in the parasail where I was like freaking out, and then just you start enjoying it all, and then you start freaking out again, and enjoy it it's, your mind can play so many tricks on you and i think that happens in life every day as well it is yeah but i mean i don't know it's good to like do some things that scare the hell out of you and now i get why they say that right because they're always great things to sort of like when you're going through a stressful time to turn to and be like okay hey, if if i could do you know whatever it may be that you've done then then of course i can get through this of course i can you know get through this uh uh challenging circumstance so i mean isn't that like don't all the greats say that do something every day that scares you it's great advice have you found new things every day even though we're in this pandemic um well i think i think really touching into or sorry getting in touch with these emotions that as i say we're surfacing is is brave in itself right because a lot of let's face it it's sometimes a lot easier to just ignore it it's you know to fill suppress suppress it yeah Yeah, so i'd say that scares me but at the same time it doesn't because i'm like i'm seeing the benefits that come with it as well you know i've been reading this book it's called the shadow effect i have heard of this book i have not read it oh it's phenomenal it's literally our shadows the the demons all the dark stuff in our lives that we suppress and put away and but it's always with us Mm, interesting yeah, and we got to open it and go deep within ourselves. And again, even though we don't want to, because that can lead to a lot of mood swings, emotions, anxiety, of course. Yeah, uh, that's some, I'll have to read that one. I mean, I, I'm wondering now if, you know, again, I'm 43. I know you're younger than I am. Um, but I'm wondering mm-hmm. if like all the adults prior to me that would say you change as you get older and you don't care as much and you start to make peace with this and that. If it if it's just a rite of passage as you start to age, where you start to sort of sort of like have your midlife awakening, they call it crisis. I'd rather call it the midlife awakening. <laughs> the woke, yeah, culture. like where you're yeah. just like, uh, you know, wake up to to how unimportant certain things are, and then of course what matters instead. There's another book that you should check out. It's called Unfuck. Oh yeah, yourself. that's a great book. Oh yeah, it's a book it's, I need to revisit. It's so, <laughs> it's so yeah, true, yeah. though. Hey, like in life, um, yeah, those little things in life. It's hard to remember, though. Like I think you know the when you in the in the normal culture that we live in, you know, prior to pandemic, you you can read a million books on this sort of stuff, and because you're so busy, well, at least for me, I can only speak for myself. I don't know how much I re- retain. I'm with you 100%. It's one year out the other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're sort of like, even when you would retain a little bit, you just get right back to being crazy busy and you're like, uh, uh, you know, forget all those self-help books, forget all that amazing advice. I'm going to go back to living this, uh, you know, with my head in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> have you found that with everything that's going on, that we will have positivity coming out of this all um, absolutely I, I i i can't think of it any other way i just but I, I do think it's important like you can't we can't go into this expecting like the whole world's going to come together in some big like kumbaya moment i, I mean i'd love that but i can't imagine that's going to happen so is like stay true to the good people in your life and and whoever you may meet but i don't know like i think I think our gut has always told us when we're not with our people, you know, with our type of people that fit your personality and, uh, you know, listen to that, stay away from that. Um, yeah. 
And I think honing in on it now is the most it important is. So, thing. Yeah, you know, like, would I love world peace? Absolutely. Do I think it's happening anytime soon? Probably not. Not to be negative, but on the flip... Yeah, the reality, let's be but... realistic. But on the flip side, really hold those awesome people close and the others, let them fall by the wayside. Though I do appreciate you doing this with me. And again, we're all learning and it's actually nice to have depth rather than width. For times. sure. And I mean, I think... I think... I get when you talk about this stuff, it's always important, at least for me to be, you know, honest in my journey that like, it's, it's, it's a journey. Like I, I by no means have it all figured out, but again, Mm -hmm. I do, I'm starting to understand the importance of being kind to yourself. I mean, you heard that I've heard that saying as far back as when I was a kid and you know, you're like, what does that even mean? Be kind to yourself. Now I actually get it because in times of strife and times of hardship, if you're not kind to yourself, then like how in the world can you be good to others? Again, cliche, or we've heard this before. It's like inner peace starts. I know, but it's, and... it's weird. All these cliches suddenly became true. That's one thing I've said this year, many <laughs> times, all these like kind of tacky cliches that your parents said, or like that you read in like, you know, books that you're like, ah, I don't know. It's kind of cheesy. They're all totally true. Have you found that putting the oxygen mask on yourself before the other passengers have actually been so true as well? Uh, when I when I really practice it, yeah, it's um, yeah. it's amazing actually the the headspace you can um, enter when you're actually good to yourself. Very easily to uh, you know get out of that headspace though. You know the minute you give somebody else your energy, um, especially people that don't deserve it. That's the thing I've learned this year is, yes, you can be open and you can hone in on yourself. And when you find peace within yourself, it's beautiful. But you start opening yourself up to the world with who you are, your light. There's a lot of vultures. There there. are. I don't know why that is. Like, I I think that's actually, I've spent 20 years of my adult life now questioning, like, why, you know, adults. And I actually had this discussion in the podcast last week, again, where, I think you leave high school believing that adults are going to be good to each other because, you know, only teenagers are kind of mean to each other or sort of bully. And, and I wish they actually taught more of this in school for, and maybe they do now, I don't even know, preparing, you know, young adults, like life is tough out there and, and not everyone's going to have your back. And, um, you know, it's not all wonderful peaches and roses out there and everyone's good to each other. Like you really got to, you got to, protect yourself and and keep again those people close but like you said there are vultures out there and i don't get it i don't get why adults can be that kind of cruel to each other but it's a circle of life i mean if you find peace as an adult within yourself and you work so hard to search Mm -hmm. for inner peace and all of a sudden you know you show your light to the world then there's vultures and they right. grab a piece of you and there are takers out there and they just drain your energy. And then all of a sudden you're back at square one where you're like, I'm not happy. <laughs> I got to go revisit some self-help you, books. You're hundred percent right. Circle. And the people yeah, I have sure. admired the most are these people who are like, they're kind natured. They've got good hearts. They're obviously in touch with themselves and spirituality and they are able to always remove themselves from situations that are, um, like I've seen people leave parties, um, and been like, huh, I wonder what's going on there. Well, obviously something happened. Some, something came into their kind of Intuition. that or, or circumstance happened where it's like, no, I'm not letting, you know, let's say, I don't know, maybe they had a clash with somebody at that party and they're like, you know what? I'm not le- allowing my energy to be robbed from me. And anyways, I'm not really giving a great example here, but um i've watched this happen in people that are very confident in themselves they will walk away from anything that is stealing their their light is it silence 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 or even people who are very polite like where i mean i don't think i necessarily knew what they were doing at the time but i've watched people excuse themselves from dinners and they seem perfectly they're like okay well it's great seeing you all and you know, have a great night. And you're kind of like, whoa, this just got started. Unbeknownst to me, this person may have had just an intuition, like you say, or a moment where suddenly they felt 
people that can own their energy and their light that much that they just remove themselves um, anytime that it's it's uncomfortable or that they're starting to fade. And I have I've I've actually done the opposite in many cases of those people. So I'm very envious of those people, and I like am intrigued at how they can practice that. And actually leave it there. They don't just leave the party and take it home and yeah. and, and hold that burden. No, that they're, they're unapologetic yeah. about about their owning their light. That's amazing. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Zach. Always a wonderful conversation with you.